During this online conference, you'll be hearing amazing testimonies of how God has been faithfully bringing his Jewish people back to Israel. And at the very heart of these stories is a worldwide network of believers who have been praying for their journey home and for them to become established in the land of Israel. Every Olim or new immigrant arriving in Israel is a miracle, a living fulfillment of prophecy from more than 2000 years ago. And they're an answer to prayer. Praying for Alia is such a privilege. What an honour to be intimately involved in the Lord's work and through prayer be part of the miracle. But what does praying for Israel look like? Well, there's a really beautiful and helpful picture of what it means to pray for Israel in Isaiah 62. And verses 6 and 7 say, I have posted watchmen on your walls, O Jerusalem. They will never be silent day or night. You who call on the Lord, give yourselves no rest and give him no rest till he establishes Jerusalem and makes her the praise of the earth. So picture the scene. A large city with strong, high walls and inside the city, the people might be sleeping or the streets might be filled with chatter and noise as they're busy going about their business. And on the walls stands the watchman. Day and night, there are watchmen standing fast to their posts, alert, awake, and watching on behalf of the whole city. A great responsibility, but what a privileged position. So how do we stand guard in prayer? on behalf of the Jewish people. Firstly, a watchman is always alert. When someone unknown approaches the city, the watchmen cry out asking who they are and what their intentions are. And in the same way, when we're praying for Israel, just as the watchman is looking out for things that come against the city, we're on the alert for anything that comes against God's heart and plans for his Jewish people. And this takes discernment and it takes wisdom. But thankfully we have the Holy Spirit to help us recognise what's taking place and how it lines up with the Lord's plans and purposes. Accurate, reliable information and news can be a great tool in our prayers so that we can identify anything affecting Israel and the Jewish people that we need to bring before God. It's wise to get a good balance here though, because on the one hand, we could be quite unaware of what's going on, perhaps like a guard who's asleep on duty. Or on the other, we might allow ourselves to become bombarded with news and theories and ideas. So it's good to have a selection of reliable resources that we can use to keep us up to date and praying effectively. And as we're asking the Holy Spirit to help us discern situations that unfold in relation to Israel, we're dependent on him to guide us and to help us as we pray and direct our prayers. Sometimes there might seem so much that we ought to pray for. We might feel overwhelmed by the need but that's the beauty of being led by the Spirit when we pray. Because when we're following the Spirit's leading and praying for the nations, the people and the matters that he puts on our hearts, we can trust that we are safely under his covering and that we're not going to miss what his priorities are for our prayers. And if we go back to the image of the watchman, the watchman has been placed on his position by the general or the head of the army. They position each one of their specific post and then when their watch is complete and their work's done, he moves them on. The general doesn't expect the watchman to patrol the whole length of the walls and watch over the entire city, non-stop. This would leave large areas of the wall exposed and make the city vulnerable. And what's more, the watchman would end up exhausted. So in the same way the Holy Spirit shows us what we're to pray, 
how long we should be praying for and where we should be guarding in prayer. He'll show us when we've broken through and when we can move on, although we might not yet see it in the physical. Some topics we'll need to revisit regularly and they'll require persistent prayer. And other times we'll see the Lord move really quickly. But in staying close to him and hearing his voice, he'll show us what he's specifically calling us to take up in prayer. How long we're to pray for it and what we should pray. And here we also find one of the blessings of being a worldwide body of people who are praying. Because not only can we support one another as we discern what the spirit is saying, we can also help keep each other on track. Quite often, watchmen work in pairs. Together, they would keep watch over the area allotted to them. They could keep one another focused. And together, they were really effective at discerning danger and raising the alarm. So if you do have the opportunity to pray with someone or in a prayer group, it can be such a blessing to join with others. But of course, Ebenezer is deeply grateful to all who support us in prayer, however you're able. Many of you have been supporting us in prayer since the very foundation of the ministry, and you are an amazing example of those persevering watchmen. And we are so thankful for you. The closer we get to the complete fulfillment of the Lord's plans for Israel, the greater the opposition will be. And so as those who call upon the Lord, we will need to be even more persistent in our prayers, giving him no rest till he establishes Jerusalem and makes her the praise of the earth. In fact, that phrase, you who call upon the Lord, is actually translated from an expression that means you who remind, mazkira, which is the modern word in Hebrew for secretary. So our calling in praying for Israel is to remind and bring before the Lord his promises. And his word says that he has made an everlasting covenant with Abraham, and that his descendants would inhabit the land, that he would gather the Jewish people back from all the lands where they have been scattered, and that he would watch over them as a shepherd does his flock. So our prayers are based upon the eternal word of God, and through prayer we are standing upon the word and reminding God of his promises. As watchmen, when there are threats to these promises, God calls us to sound out the alarm before him. And when the watchman raises the alarm, the general responds. The army is mobilised, the soldiers move into action. And what a great image of what happens when we pray. So when there are threats to the legitimacy of Israel as a nation, when there are obstacles to the regathering of the Jewish people to the land, or when anti-Semitism is rising all around us, we sound out the alarm and we cry out to God and he promises to hear us. And we have seen him faithfully move in answer to our prayers. Now we might wonder, is God not watching that he asks us to remind him? Surely he promises us in Psalm 121 that he's the keeper of Israel, not slumbering or sleeping. So has he forgotten what he's promised? Maybe he's changed his mind. Absolutely not. He is faithful and true and watching over his word to perform it. The Lord could, of course, easily fulfill his promises for Israel without our involvement. Yet in taking up his invitation to be watchman for Israel, we're joining with him. It takes time, takes effort and energy, but the privilege and blessing of praying for Israel is that we draw close to the Father. Through prayer, he allows us to partner with him in something that is so close to his heart, the regathering and the restoration of Israel.